coming up on Coast in the Desert. We are riding our first roller coaster in the Middle East. These views are crazy. Welcome inside Global Village. It's just so grand and over the top in the best way possible. Woo! Okay. We're about to ride the UAE's tallest drop tower. Hope you guys enjoyed that montage as we're driving up here to the top of Jebel Jace to start off our morning. We're like northeast of Dubai, about two hours. And these views are crazy. Yeah, I'm like, where are we? It's like another planet. It literally looks like another planet. It's awesome though. <laughs> Who was saying it looks like Radiator Springs? It, a little bit, yeah. It looks like the Middle Eastern Radiator Springs. It's, yeah. We're doing a couple things up here today. Hopefully by now you've seen our video from the Jice Flight, which is the world's longest zip line, over 100 miles per hour, absolutely crazy. What we're going to show you in this video is the mountain coaster that's also up there. And then uh, the main core of this video is going to be Global Village, which will be tonight. So Yay, yeah, Epcot. it's going to be awesome. It, it, this is going to be a great day. <laughs> I am very excited. It's my first actual day here in the UAE. And yeah. actually, it looks better in the day. Should we tell them now that we're actually doing a water park up here? <laughs> <laughs> but we are riding our first roller coaster in the Middle East today. It's gonna be good. A it's a mountain coaster. <laughs> it counts. There it is. Man, that is a crazy looking mountain coaster. Wow. What? You're not impressed? I mean, I think goats on the roof is better. But, oh, you know. okay. Well, the, technically, uh, we've seen a couple goats on the mountain, right not here. a roof. The entrance is right, is literally like right off of the main road. So you just pull over. And then just walk up to the coaster. I wouldn't call this a main road. I mean, it's the only road. It's the road. only road. The so. only road. Here you can see the prices for the Jice letter. So if you're 10 years old and above, it is 50 AED, which is a little less than 14 US dollars. And then here's where you load. It is a weekend manufactured Alpine coaster. All right, we just got off the Jice Sledder and that was pretty good. It's a 10 minute long experience, so very long. It was very long, it was like three lift hills. Yeah, I like the last lift because it was, it was a bit faster, but it auto braked itself. We so. didn't use the it. brakes. Yeah, I didn't yeah. use the brakes, no, but it, it, it like so. slowed itself down. It was yeah. like, chill out. It had some pretty fast sections because it would go through moments where you just build up a bunch of speed along this turn and, and then, like, yeah, like, and then it would slow you down. Dude, you could go pretty fast on that thing though. Like, it was, yeah. it was a long one. Like, I've done some pretty short, underwhelming kind of mountain coasters. No, coast I, I agree. So I, that I wasn't one of them. I could have done with a little less trimming, but I also completely understand that there were probably some sections that, Even. if it didn't, it would have been. I was gonna say, would you rather much. just go flying? Well, exactly. Out of the mountain coasters I've done, that definitely is up there. And also, the views are absolutely spectacular. I know it had to literally say like, "Don't stop to take pictures" or yeah, anything. Like, yeah. <laughs> pretty solid stuff. Uh, we showed you guys a bunch of off-ride footage of it, as well as some uh, drone views. There is also a full POV up on the channel that you can go check out if you want to see what the entire ride experience is like. So now we're gonna start our drive back down to Dubai and visit Global Village. Yay, Epcot!
There's Global Village. And actually, all the way down there, that building back there, is IMG Worlds of Adventure, which we're going to in a couple days. So that's actually really funny that they're like conveniently right next to each other. This entrance is huge. And this is one of like several entrances at Global Village. Wait, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah we, there's like a ton of them. I was unaware. They're all different countries. That's yeah. actually pretty Everything cool. Everything here is Epcot. Yes. Like Epcot, but foreign. Greetings, yeah. but Epcot Terrans. Yeah, no uh, Guardians here, unfortunately. Well, why oh, well we then what are, we, what are we doing here? Yeah, <laughs> time to go, guys. Uh, seriously, this is wildly impressive. This entrance reminds me of Energylandia. It's just so grand and over the top in the best way possible. It's just a lot. Yeah, like <laughs> and, and lot. maybe like Energylandia, we'll get some areas that will look elaborately themed and then others that will just be like I carnival know. rides. <laughs> yeah, carnival. exactly. All right, and welcome inside Global Village. So right here is a wonder car. This is what will get us onto the different rides here at Global Village. So basically, it's kind of set up a little different where basically you pay to get into the park, but then the rides cost a little extra. And from what we've heard, uh, the rides are generally like overpriced. So a lot of people actually elect not to do them. And so for the most part, the rides don't really get aligned. So the park may feel busy, but the rides won't have a long wait. So. That's at least good. This plaza is enormous and there's so many different like food locations just right off to the sides. This stunning fountain here in the center. Wow. Yeah, I'm already impressed. The scale of everything here is absolutely massive. This is wildly impressive. Oh, come on. It feels like home. <laughs> wow. That's, this is funny. I mean, That's the U.S. section. Yeah, I mean, I wear my hat. I carry my goons. I don't know. I was expecting... I ride like, my horse. Something that looked like New York. I didn't think it'd be the Old West. It's always <laughs> the Old West, dude. All right, the landscape is starting to change. Now we're getting more carnival rides because we're in a legit like carnival section. So this is where all the rides and roller coasters are. Why they don't have like a well-themed signature roller coaster here is a little bizarre. I feel like that fit right in with like everything else. But you know, what? that's all right. London Loop. Hey, uh, it's a roller coaster with the word loop in it and it does not go upside down. Uh, that's very fitting. So it reminds me of like the Six Flags descriptions that were like, uh, like the Nitro description that was like, enjoy the loops and turns of Nitro. I'm like, it's like, no, no. Sure. <laughs> Family boomerang. Fox Racers. Welcome yes, back, riders. How was that ride? <laughs>
<laughs> no, that was fine. I'm just no, these things are really good. They're really good drop towers. That's the last one from Thriller. Is that that's the last one from Thriller? Yeah. I was told this is a light spritz, so I hope that that statement ages well. I'm wearing all white. I hope you're right too. <laughs> Someone did not think this through. I've never done one of these like uh, portable raft rides. Any raft ride I've ever done has been like a like a permanent installation. Like this is kind of weird. It is weird. Look at that view. Oh well, yeah. I know. Oh. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, that wasn't bad at all. Oh, that wasn't even that bad. No, that was a light spritz. Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my leg. My leg. That's the shortest rapids I've ever done. That gets the job done. Are you wet? A little bit. Then it did what it was meant to do. All right. As far as SPF pieces go. It was! I like the bigger layout. There's, it feels more like a substantial ride experience. We're still going. You don't go around as many times though, which is fine by me. I, I am I, mommy, 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 mommy. All right, we just wrapped up a couple rides here in the carnival section. We're going to go continue to walk around the rest of the park. All right, then we're going to come back because there's also like a dark ride. House of Fear back there. All stuff that looks really good and we definitely don't want to miss. Yeah, th this place kind of reminds me of like the attraction lineup you would get at like a shore park or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like a beachfront park. Like they're all like kind of like small, there's no permanent installations, uh, no, no like big thrill like coasters or anything like that. I like it though. It's fun. It's a fun atmosphere. It's just kind of overwhelming here. Yeah, this park is so cool at the front end. And then everything in the back end is very temporary, which I understand that's Inner the vibe. I understand that's the vibe of the carnival, but I think this park would largely benefit from a good-sized roller coaster, and I feel like they absolutely could get one. Like this park is clearly busy. Yeah. We're here on a weekend. There's a lot of people walking around. There's a lot of parks in this area between Abu Dhabi and Dubai. So many big roller coasters. Give Global Village a good sized coaster. I know it's a substantial investment, but man, I think it would pay off. I think it, I think it could. Uh, they do have IMG, like literally across the street, um, that does have big thrill coasters. But it's always dead. That's what I'm saying. I know. Like, well, that's what park... I'm saying. Like, this park actually has people at it. So yeah. maybe they could really go for it. But I don't know if that would really hurt IMG then if they did that. I feel like we've seen so much, but in the grand scheme of things, we probably haven't even scratched the surface because like everywhere you look, there's something else that you haven't seen before. Yeah, I, I feel like it's like almost too much because every time I go to a park, I make like mental notes. I'm like, okay, I'll go back to that at some point, like blah, blah, blah. But, like there's so much here and like I want to check out like all the marketplaces and like I love seeing like, like things that people are making and selling and I want to buy some things here and I'm like, 
it's too much. Like, I don't even know where to start and like, I'm gonna feel like unsatisfied when I leave, like no matter what. There's no way I'm gonna leave here being like, okay, I saw everything I wanted to see. Like, I got whatever I wanted to buy. I'm gonna be like, I, I don't think I did anything. I don't know. Yeah, because here's the thing is like, you can see all these massive facades, like each one representing a different country. Like if you thought Epcot was a lot, they have like what, what is it, a dozen countries? The, something like that? This park has like all of them. <laughs> like, I don't know where to go because like I see the facade I'm like wow this is amazing but then you can go inside any of them and see all like the stores and the shops I'm like holy crap and it's all things that are like special to that country which is why I want to go and look because I love stuff like that and like I, I just and it's overwhelming when you go inside because it's like what you think of a marketplace where they're all like come buy this buy this buy this and it's like you don't have you can't just like go and browse like if you like even make subtle eye contact with a product like you will get bombarded <laughs> so like you just you have to like try to like look out of the corner of your eye so it's I am very overwhelmed I'm not gonna lie if, if you're a person who is like anxious then this is maybe somewhere that you like need to take in small steps uh, but then we got Taylor who's not at all so he's probably fine I, I don't know I'm still like this is this is madness and there's still other rides that we need to do like and like the carnival section feels like its own park yeah, compared to this it is like Jeez, don't come here if you're just planning on doing the roller coasters. I cannot emphasize that enough. No, I think mean, roller coasters are fine. There's a Vekoma boomerang and an SBF Visa. Like, I feel like that's not what you come here for. And if it is, no. then... There is a boat sailing around on this lagoon. I'm guessing that's an upcharge, but I mean, it's just awesome. Whoa. Oh my god. This is crazy. Whoa. That was freaking cool. I had no idea that was going on. I literally just walked up. I just saw lasers, fire, and everything. I had projections on the water among this dragon statue. I'm like, this is a lot, but wow. All in the same night as Global Village, we've made our way to Legoland for Miniland. In all seriousness though, I feel like these would be more impressive if they didn't have just absolutely massive facades everywhere else. I feel like I'm kind of like, oh, well I can go see bigger versions of all this somewhere else in the park, so. What do you think? This is cool. I mean, this isn't very small, but I guess in comparison to the Eiffel Tower, it is pretty small. But it's very cool of them to have representation from King's Island and King's Dominion here. It really is. I literally knew that joke was coming before <laughs> we even said it. As an absolute sucker for models though, this is pretty darn cool. So, later on this trip we're going somewhere pretty cool. Here's a sneak preview. Ta-da! Bump, bump, bump. So you know how like two minutes ago we just showed you the big Taj Mahal, now there's a small Taj Mahal. Wow. And then in another two minutes, we'll show you an even smaller Taj Mahal. We will? It just keeps going, I don't know. If anyone was curious, the real life version of this has rooms that run for like 3,000 American dollars a night. So this is probably the closest I'll ever get to it. <laughs> we love seeing a mini Ferris wheel with a real Ferris wheel in the background. <laughs> No joke, seeing these statues in real life is like so high on the bucket list, but it's like one of the ones on the bucket list that I'm like, will I ever actually accomplish it? Because it is so far out there. I guess this will have to be good enough. As if there wasn't already way too much to do here at Global Village, they have mini golf. <laughs> if you're like me and get easily overwhelmed by all this, they have nice little places for you to sit down and enjoy your anxiety attack in peace. Woohoo! <laughs> We're back at Wiener Prater. We love a good dark ride that has an outdoor section to advertise it and makes it look probably better than it is. It's very smart because again, you have to buy individual tickets to do some of these attractions. So like, we just have a card and we just go through and we scan 
to get through any of these rides. So we're gonna do the dark ride because we haven't done that one yet. And uh, I don't know, there's a bunch of other stuff we haven't done. All right guys, what do you think? Yeah, Best definitely. dark ride in this park. Yeah. Yeah. The only one? They, they spent so much money on the ride system that they couldn't afford to do anything on the inside. So they just went to their local uh, party city and they just bought up the local like uh, you yeah, know the cobwebs and the the little guy just standing there like ah. Do, do you agree with that? I do agree with that. It's like a <laughs> it's like a UK fun fair attraction. All right, so we all just did this crazy haunted house here. It's called the House of Fear. It's a full walk through horror maze. What do you guys think? The scares were good in there. Uh, the theming it could have done with a little bit more, but it was uh, good throughout. And the actors, they came at unexpected points. Yeah. I think in the UK, we definitely have scarier houses than that, where you get split up, like the ones at Fort Park and Tully's Farm. But as for a scare maze at an event like this, that's yeah, definitely one of the better ones. I, I agree with a lot of those points. Uh, they did a very common trick where you have a lot of like, um, like dummies, where they're all dressed up and you don't know who is real. There were and, teddy bears. It was yeah. like one teddy bear was like going to attack you, and the other yeah. one... We're just teddy bears. You're playing a guessing game. Who's who's the real actor? The, and the thing that works though that is different than what we're used to is like we go to the haunted houses at Universal and stuff, and you piggyback on each other the whole time. Like here, it's like just your group, so you get more like personalized scares, which I did not like because I'm scared of everything. It's a pretty good length too. Like yeah. you know, it was a pretty substantial walkthrough. Well, it costs like like uh, twelve dollars, so I would hope it'd be a good one. What are the more expensive attractions here? So the Gerstlauer Skyfly right here. Uh, it is just like every other Skyfly where you really have to like throw your whole body into it, going left, right, and you know, use your feet to help build more momentum. And I got that thing spinning, and at the end of the ride, the guy said, you got 35 flips, which is just wildly impressive. Honestly, I think that's the most amount of times I've ever spun on a Gerstler Skyfly. So, if you know how to do it and everything, oh man, they're incredible rides. They're absolutely insane. I'm like, well, I can barely see straight, but it's so funny, whenever you hit, like, the ground and... Uh, the ride comes to a stop. Everyone who's just watching the ride is just like staring at you because they're like, like they're watching you just go like this. It's so funny. Uh, yeah, incredible. So good. What is this? Digger's Lab? Just operate machinery and just dig in the sand? What? That's crazy. In the Europe section, they have a little area for the UK, and of course, the first thing you see is just a bunch of Harry Potter related items. You can just buy Voldemort's head. Okay. They have like live performers here. That's amazing. In the China section, you could just buy a full like samurai sword. Or katan, is that what it's called? I don't know, but it's freaking cool. Yep, feels like home. We wanted to see what foods and drinks they had in the America section, and turns out it's all just Mr. Beast stuff and different flavors of Fanta and Mountain Dew. They have more flavors of Mountain Dew than I've seen in the US, but they do have Baja Blast, that's kind of wild. And uh, strawberries and cream, Dr. Pepper, that's a rare one out here for sure. And uh, Hershey's, lots of Hershey's. The Iran Pavilion is easily one of the biggest here at Global Village. The facade is ginormous. The other like really big one in this area is India. Look how huge that is. All right, while we're here in Iran, you got something, what'd you try? This is an iced saffron latte okay. from a company called Haya. Taste, Haya. Taste test. Mmm. I like. You would not. No, definitely not. But I do. I'll pass. <laughs> They have another show going on out over the lake. And we're sitting down enjoying some food from the Iranian restaurant. I don't know. It's called Persian Kebab. It's Iranian food, which I've never had. Have you guys had no, food never. from Iran before? I've never had Iranian food. So we're figuring it out as we go. We're trying it out. So we got like some hummus 
and some bread stuff. Matt, you're back. Of course. You, you missed out. We did like three water rides. <laughs> did I really miss out? No, uh, we did one water ride. Wait, really? We did a haunted house too. Did it have water in it? No, not oh. no, but the water ride had water in it. That's horrible. So we got all different like kebabs and rice seafood. and there's like vegetables. What do you think? Very good. You guys got the seafood? Very yeah, nice. Good. We got shrimp. So I think that's yeah, part of that. And the shrimp yeah. is absolutely yeah. delicious. We got some beef. Yeah. You like it? Yeah, yeah. The beef is really good. Um, and the hummus uh, that we had with the bread was amazing. So yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I didn't really know what like Iranian food was, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> it's so good. As we're finishing up our time here at Global Village, there's just a huge concert or something going on out over there. Sounds awesome. So here we are exiting Global Village. It is almost midnight. This park is still open oh an extra gosh, hour. Is. They're open till 1 a.m. tonight. What? Yeah, it's oh. crazy. Um, it's still pretty packed in there too. Really I just is. want to make it noted that it was pretty packed it's when we were packed. leaving. There's like a whole like concert going on in there right now. Like, a whole concert. Yeah. A whole concert. From what I've heard, this is the busiest theme park in Dubai. Like it's Atlantis that gets packed because it's a you know this really nice water park and then Global Village gets packed because it's affordable and uh, I think it just has a wide appeal to people you for could, obvious reasons. You could argue it's kind of like Disney Springs but turned up a lot. Yeah, actually I could see that. It's like, it's, it's weird because it feels like <laughs> Epcot but then you have Disney Springs and then just everything is just and then there's some energy land yesterday. Yeah, I, I just it's don't know wild. what the word is. It's like so much pizzazz going on. It's, it's pizzazz is it's a crazy. great word. It's so crazy. Yeah. It's just like the the vibe in there is crazy. It's so much energy and yes. like yeah, like there's so much just movement and everything is happening all at once. And I stand by what I said that it's a bit overwhelming. Um, it is very overwhelming. It's very overwhelming. But like once I like settled in and like got used to like everything, I was yeah. like, okay, I can do this. This yeah. place exceeded expectations yeah so it's for yeah sure. we're gonna now go ahead and drive to our hotel for the next couple nights over by the Burj Khalifa preview of Ferrari world. Oh my god. <laughs> We're doing a room tour. I'm very busy. No, please let me in. At least say trick or treat. Trick or treat. Okay. All right. Welcome Stop in. Stop turning on the stove. What are you doing? Hi everybody. Anyways, <laughs> we got a kitchen. Here's our living space. Pull out couch. We have a view of the Empire State Building. That's not the right continent. Yeah. Hey. And we have a balcony. Let's see the view of the Burj. Nope, the Burj is, the Burj is over there. Yeah, Burj is on the other side. That's uh, okay. Anyways, and then let's see what else we got. Oh, bathroom. That's me. Oh, there's a second bathroom. Oh, nice space. Another view of the Empire State Building. I guess we're New York themed. <gasps> There's a washer. Cool. I love it. It's fun. It's actually a lot it. bigger than I thought it was going to be. I'm not going to lie. Well, there you go. Day two in the United Arab Emirates. And when I think about like what we did this morning with the mountain coaster and that crazy drive all the way up to the top of like Jebel Jace, that doesn't even feel like the same day as when we did Global Village. Like that's how much we packed into this day. It was crazy. Um, Global Village definitely exceeded expectations. The mountain coaster and the scenery was so cool. Uh, we also did a bunch of zip lining. That, if you haven't already seen, is in a separate video. Please go check it out because uh, we also did the world's longest zip line today. And that was that was freaking cool. Um, tomorrow is going to be awesome though. We're going to be riding the storm coaster. We're going to go to the top of the Burj Khalifa. We're going to Adventureland. A lot of really good stuff and uh, that will probably be spread out over a couple different Coast in the Desert videos. So. Definitely stay tuned for those, but thank you guys for joining us and 
We'll see you in the next one. Coming up on Coast in the Desert. This thing is so huge, you can't even fit it in the frame. This building right here is a skyscraper, and it's not even half the height of the drone we're in right now. We just did two rides on the Dubai Drone roller coaster. It's like a futuristic Chuck E. Cheese, if you will.